<laughs> Hello, folks. Um, I am Hobo Tom. I think. I don't know, because I've been really busy. I've had a couple of guests in. I've had one guest in this week. You've seen the Techno Blue Ranger. And we're going to see a lot of him probably, well, maybe tomorrow too. Because I have to go back to work tomorrow. And I won't be around to take a look at Crown Jewel. I know I did the last Saudi show live stream. Oh, but wait, the good news. I think I only have like 29 more days left on my YouTube suspension. So that's a good thing. Mainly because I can go back to live streaming. Because there's going to be lots of live stream, I think, over the next year. Especially with AEW coming around. And I've learned my lesson with WWE and AEW. Impact! Ah. New Japan! I almost want to test them out, too. And who cares about Ring of Honor? So they're, 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 <laughs> they're the shit thing I'm talking about. It's terrible. And NXT's good. I don't enough NXT live anyway. Enough about that. So again, this whole week has been screwed up. So today you're getting a triple, triple, triple feature. Um, so let's start off by talking about Monday Night Raw. WWE is going through a very weird stage where... The wrestling part's really good. I cannot stress that enough. The wrestling for WWE is amazing. The problem is everything else, especially if it's not wrestling related. Uh, the matches for Raw, I thought for the most part, were really fun. They were good. They had some purpose and reason behind them, I think. Surf and turf. Surf and turf. Whoa. I have that many? The heck? Wow, the wrestling's really good. The big problem, the stories suck. No other way to put it. Um, except for this story, which is really fun. Uh, so Raw opens up with the Kabuki Warriors. And, and, and Paige comes out. She says, oh, I'm, I'm so happy I, I knew these two ladies. Oh, <laughs> Paige only knew. I love the new look of the Kabuki Warriors. Making sense. Both are a little bit darker. Uh, Kyrie Sane's wearing black. She comes out with a parcel, which is amazing. Asuka's just gone like full demon Asuka. And I don't even care that I have no clue what they're saying on the mic. It just sounds awesome from them. Excellent. Oh, wow. I didn't even know I had a bookmark from that. Oh, you saw, saw the unseeable part. I'm gonna get, <laughs> if I was monetized, I'd be demonetized for that, but who cares? Um, and then, oh, oh, it was so good. Kabuki Warriors said, Paige, go hit the bricks, because Paige got missed it. Yeah, the green mist. That was awesome. They said, we don't need you anymore. Which is a lot better than the way AOP let go of Paul Allering. Because Allering, he had the algorithm. Asuka, I think, has her own algorithm. And it's called green mist. And now, oh, Kyrie Cena has to do some mist, too. That would be cool. Black mist. Oh, that's awesome sounding. Let's see though. So with this, um, it was really good. Um, it starts so this leads into the match: Becky Lynch versus Kyrie Sane. Whoa, Kyrie can deal out some kicks there. Um, start Kyrie. This is strong style. I think the thing I like most about this match is that Becky began to open up her repertoire of moves. She did like a bridging, bridging chicken wing, which was awesome. Asuka's there as a distraction, but she's so good. 
I've never realized that, that Becky Lynch is actually taller than Kyrie Sane. I know Kyrie Sane's short. I didn't realize she was that short. Um, again, Becky, she has some new moves. Or she has some moves that she pulled out of Arsenal or she learned from someone. Kyrie Sane's, oh, vicious Kyrie Sane is a good Kyrie Sane. I'll tell you what, this was a good match. Um, eventually, Becky did get Kyrie Sane into the disarm her. It was a fun match, though. I liked it. This was a surf and turf match. And I'll tell you what, the way, the way this match started off, I'm like, this is going to be a good Raw. Uh, then we got to our truth coming out to the ring, um, talking about how he misses a 24-7 champion. And then Buddy Murphy comes out and is like, no, you don't have to worry about uh, that. You have to worry about me. Uh, it was solid Matt wrestling from both. Our truth can still do that one. Um, Rick James! Split thing that he does to dodge. He can do the axe kick. I don't know how he can do that. I mean, I can still do a couple things. I'm a little bit younger than our truth. So, yeah, Buddy Murphy's so good, though. Very solid mat wrestling. Buddy Murphy, he took that 205, all the stuff that he used to do in 205, being the power guy in 205, and it's really being to translate now into the WWE. I mean, just like some of the opponents he's had in some of the matches. I mean, he held his own against Roman Reigns, did really good against uh, Daniel Bryan. I mean, he beat our truth. Even though you had the 24-7 distracting the Bollywood boys, like doing their Bollywood thing around the ring. I don't even know what that I don't even know what that was or well, that, that's that's a mock right now. That's that's I know we, That's the mock arena. Cha cha cha. Whatever. Um but this match, I think the 24-7 actually took away from this. Because you were like distracted, you're like, huh? And that pulling knee to finish off our truth instead of, I do like the fact that for lesser opponents, wrestlers are using their signature moves instead of their finisher moves. That makes sense. It makes the finisher feel special. This match again, Buddy Murphy won, but the distraction with a twenty-four-seven, yeah, it was a ham sandwich of a match. Then the Street Profits come out through the crowd. Big hype package. Um, they hug it out in the ring, which is always fun to see. The next thing you notice that there's Woo! Rick Flair is in the ring with Brother Hulk Hogan. And again, they're getting now. It's like, okay, we've seen we had, we had a sick man with our team. Now we're going to have some individuals from our team. So, um, uh, a ricochet came out. Drew McIntyre came out. Oh. This was a clash of styles. This was amazing. Ricochet, uh, he starts off, he gets the early advantage by flying. Flying. Not even jumping. Flying. Uh, until Drew catches him, because Drew is definitely the stronger of the two. And whenever Ricochet could keep the pace up, very typical of his matches, he did a lot better again. Uh, when he could use momentum on his side from running off the ring ropes or flying. It's not jumping, it's, it's flying with Ricochet. He did really good. Uh, there would always be that one moment Drew would uh, it seemed Rick, uh, Ricochet took a little bit too long and Drew would get his senses and it's like just catch him and just like ragdoll him somewhere. Drew also did the leg drop. Oh, to Hulk Hogan's dismay. And then he, he stared at Hulk Hogan, too. It's like, I did your finisher. Uh, again, this this is good. Again, whenever it was a quicker pace, Ricochet was awesome. Uh, he did that acai moonsault. Oh, wow. Uh, eventually, though, Randy Orton comes in. This makes sense, though. Because he is a part of Team Flair. Yeah, RKO's ricochet out of nowhere, which was great. The referee saw that was like, 
how did you get in? Wait, you can't. No. Ding, ding, ding. Ring the bell. We got to sell the dust the fittest, baby. But you know what? This match is so good. It wasn't no sirloin and lobster tail. But this was a steak and some crab cakes, baby. But that means it's still a tough and tough match. So again, the wrestling so far, I'm like, whoa! It's like we didn't need you didn't necessarily need the street profits. Uki Warriors under ten is the opening. Um, then there was a promo between Umberto and AJ Styles. So awesome is AJ Styles. AJ Styles, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um, so there was that, and then in the ring. It kind of went south for one match. It was Rizzo and Brian, two guys dressed up like Cubs baseball players, taking on the Viking Raiders. It was a squash match, nothing but a squash match. The one guy didn't even want to get in the ring. He tagged his partner immediately. Can of soup. I just don't need any more of this. I want to see the Viking Raiders have real competition, get into a feud with someone. If they're going to do squash matches, they have to do like a beat the clock challenge with jobbers with someone. Or do the thing, anything you can do, I can do better. That would make more sense. Uh, then we had Andrade with Selena Vega. Did she spot? Saw my cat walking over there. She's staring at me because it should be my bedtime. Oh, there she goes. The other way. Uh, I was Selena Vega. Or, I'm sorry, Andrade Cien Almas with Selena Vega. And Sin Cara with Catalina or Carolina? Because he said Catalina, but the graphics said Car Car Carolina. I don't know. S Kevin Dunn. Dun, 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 dun. You are not you doing your job again, sir. Catalina's cute, though. I can see why he's not doing his job. Wait a second. That's, that's probably some... He's not doing this match. He's that's probably some low-level person. I forgot it. Probably hit the wrong button. But I'll tell you what. This was another amazing match. This match actually seemed a lot better than the last match they had. One, it just seemed so much smoother. Um, it didn't feel botchy. There wasn't like that, oh, he just fell on his head moment. Uh, Andrade hit the Argentinian backbreaker. Again, I like it when they start pulling out new moves. It makes it interesting. It's just not five moves of doom. Uh, five moves of doom. <laughs> shoulder, shoulder tackle. Shoulder tackle. Back body drop. You can't see me. AA. Wow, I can still remember that. That's not good. Or maybe it is good. Who knows? But, so at least it's not the five moves of doom. It's, it's something different. They're keeping it fresh. Which is always good to see. And if you think about it, if you're a professional wrestler, you don't want to do the same thing over and over and over again. You're, you're going to get bored. You're going to get stale. No one's going to want to see you. I mean, if you keep it fresh, you're like, oh, I want to see what he does this time. Again, it's kind of draw the audience into it. Um, again, Sin Cara was, was really good, too. He was spot on point with the Lucha style. Again, Andrade tried to ground him from doing his Lucha style. And this time, Selena Vega got her comeuppance. Because I was going to call Kate Carolina. She caught Vega trying to cheat. So she hit Selena Vega with her own Hurricanrana. And so, oh no, she actually caught. Oh no, that's right. Vega was going for the Hurricanrana. Carolina, there's a smallish sized woman, caught her. Why couldn't everyone else just catch Lena Vega if this woman could catch her? 
It's terrible. In this instance, it was good, though. But for all the men that, that, that Zelina Vega's heart Quran, it's terrible. How can this 110-pound woman catch this 90-pound woman? You're a 200-pound guy. Why can't you catch this 90-pound woman? Doesn't make sense. Physics, folks. Pure and simple physics. Uh, so Caroline caught Vega, slammed her right into the barrier. And you're like, whoa, why couldn't that have happened before? See, Carl was impressed. He finally said, whoa, you're the first person ever to catch her. That means he was distracted down as a roll-up victory by Andrade, who normally loses by, by roll-up. Again, Andrade's learned the roll-up, the most devastating move in all professional wrestling. Besides the low blow, and the low blow's even kind of getting abused now. But uh, this was fun. This is another surf and turf match. Then we had the Iconics come out. And they took on a weird tag team combination of Charlotte Flair and Natalia. I don't remember those two ever teaming up. They maybe they did when they first came from NXT, but I can't remember anything recent. Because again, I want to say they've been rivals for a long time. She yeah, because it was always Charlotte Flair with Ric Flair, Natalia. With Brett in her corner. So, yeah. What are these two doing partnering up? Who knows? Uh, uh, Charlotte Flair didn't tell you, though. They take control of the match kind of early. <laughs> I'll tell you what. The iconic still. Oh, Peyton Royce didn't dye her hair. I wonder if Sean Spears doesn't like that green hair. Hmm. I don't think Peyton Royce had that blue tint either. Wait. Peyton Royce... Billy Kate didn't have that blue tint in her hair. It just wasn't me. The repackaging of the I cut it out! <laughs> but I'll tell you what, Peyton Royce and Billy Kate can still talk, but they can still scream, I don't think so, toots! <laughs> oh, that was so good! I'll tell you what, the fact that they can just talk and scream, and they can still wrestle. It was a fun enough match. Uh, Natalia put. I don't think it was Peyton Royce into the sharpshooter. Yeah, Peyton Royce, and she like tapped immediately. This was a fun match. I was entertained. Again, the iconics are really entertaining. So, therefore, this is a cheeseburger match. And Seth Rollins came out, and, and I'm getting tired of Seth Rollins. Seth. Yeah. Uh, it was Seth Rollins versus Rowan. False kind of every match. This was actually kind of fun. Uh, Seth, he tried to out-brawl Rowan a couple times. Not happening. Um, didn't work. Seth, whenever he hit something big, it was always based on momentum. Either flying, doing, it, doing all his dives, which is getting repetitive, or running off the ropes a lot. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what. What was that? The ugly rope holder? Okay, there was some rope spot. Oh, using the ropes. Using the ropes. Yeah, a lot. Um, went through a table, which is really fun. They, they went to the outside. They went to the concourse area. That's always a thrill. You're, you're, you're getting your your over overpriced souvenir cup soda and, and pretzel because that's all you can afford. And you're like, whoa, they're, they're right here in front of me. This is actually worth the, the $15 ticket I got in the nosebleed section. And to pay the, 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 the 20 bucks for a, a pretzel and soda. Don't even get me about arena beer. That's whoa. They brought outside, which is pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a, it's just through a merch table. Oh, yeah, they also used the rope holder. That's, that's what it is. I'm like, rope holder? Yeah, they used um, 
the velvet rope holder and just started sm Rowan just smashed him with it. It was kind of cool. Uh, Rowan put Seth through a merch table. Poor guy was absolutely terrified. Why? Wow. You have to look. I wonder if they're going to advertise these matches. If I go to a match, I have to see if they have like an out of place merch table because you know that merch table is getting destroyed. Then they went back to the ring. Uh, Rowan hit a fun splash running around the ring. That was pretty cool. Uh, Rowan then grabbed Seth. Or he threw like the steps at threw the steps at him. Then they started to brawl up to the stage. Seth did the stomp to Rowan on the table. Well, chair shots, and they went to the back. And Seth saw a forklift. Seth Rollins needs how to learn needs how to learn to operate a forklift. It's just not as effective saying you put that on top of him. It's cooler when you do it yourself. Just ask, well, your buddy Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, even Barry Corbin knows how to use a forklift. I know how to use a forklift. Wait, yeah, I have used a forklift. Yeah, I have used a forklift. I've used hydraulic equipment before. It's not that hard. Like, depending on what it is, you have, like, a steering wheel, a bunch of levers, and most of the time the levers have some kind of, like, marking on them. And you go, Tsh, and thing goes down. Tsh, thing goes up. Another lever. Tsh, forklift spreads. Tsh, forklift comes together. Not that hard. Then you have, like, a shifter for forward. And beep, 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 for reverse. And that's about it. And they all run on propane, so it's simple to use. Or, depending where they are, a couple of them are actually battery operated, too. So, Seth has to learn how to use a forklift. Put it on your resume, Seth. And do something after your wrestling career is over. Then we had Alistair Black promo. Meh. Oh, um, by the way, that Seth Rollins Rowan match, that was a surf and turf match. Then we need AJ Styles versus Umberto Carrero. Oh. Umberto, we're not worthy. AJ, we're not worthy. Umberto, we're not worthy. AJ, we're not worthy. Again, when they did, the first move Umberto did was a headlock, but he wanted to go right against the ropes. Makes sense. The headlock was on, I think, for all of like three seconds. It wasn't a freaking wrestle match. Again, when they put arm bar, they did it to set up something else. That's the way wrestles are meant to be. They're meant to be a setup move, just not to sit there for five minutes, unless it looks like you're grinding the guy's face into like a rope. Again, I understand you, you, you have a headlock, you go against the ropes, and if you're the heel... You run his eyes against the rope. That hurts. That's a, that's a headlock. That looks like it's just not fun. And then you have to stand back. Oh, my eyes. My eyes pop. And and then you get hit by something you can't see. Makes sense. Armbar. Oh, armbar. Let's see here. Wait a second. Punch. Punch. Oh, flippy thing. Flippy sequence. Again, wrestled with purpose. AJ Styles went to New Japan. AJ Styles, oh, just grounded. See, in this instant, wrestles make sense because AJ Styles knows Umberto can fly. So what do you go do against the guy who flies? You ground them. Makes sense. Can use wrestles when they make sense or when it's a setup. It's very simple. Re wrestling 205. Headlocks and armbars. Oh. That sounds professorial. Um, again, AJ is so good with working with anyone who's even the slightest bit athletic. Umberto's flying. He hit AJ once with that moonsault he does. I'll tell you what. He has one of the best looking moonsaults ever. He might have. Ooh, I don't know. Ricochet has a good one too. Charlotte Flair might be out of the top five in moonsault. Whoa. Um, but then he went to the wheel too often. He tried to go up again. AJ caught AJ caught him, threw him down. He banged his knee. Um, got him into the calf crusher. Again, AJ Styles smells blood. 
New Japan AJ goes after said body part. So that was pretty cool. He taps out. He looked like he was in pain. Amazing surf and turf match. Thing about this is, um, he didn't want to go shake his hand. Umberto put his hand on you. AJ's like, oh, not happening. So Umberto just slaps him. And for that slap, AJ Styles put him in the Styles Clash. Club shows up. Street Profits show up. Make the save. Eh. Good. And we had the King's Court. The funniest part of this is one, Lana's no longer Russian. Rusev's a sex addict. And whoa, those scripted lines. Those scripted lines were bad. Um, Rusev just wanted sex all the time. Your here's here's wife. Yeah. Uh don't you wanna bump uglies with your husband? I don't wanna be a mommy. I have a career. Bruce of Smash. Uh this is comically bad writing though. I mean I don't know what Low level WWE writer did that, but that was just bad. Um, Rusev, Rusev did so <laughs> again, those strikes by Lana after Bobby Lashley shows up. She's like, eh, eh, eh. Rusev's like, the heck are you doing? Uh, eventually, Bobby Lashley gets some low blows, and yeah, wh whatever. It was a good raw. The fact that the uh, King's Court was the main event was. Not good. Overall, I mean, I, I, wow, this is a surf and turf raw. That's the first part of this three part show. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little break and we'll come right back. And yep, that was a little break we needed between shows. Because that was Monday night. Again, I was sick. I think I caught something from my coworker or some disease ridden child. You never know. Or maybe the weather. I was out hoboing Sunday night and then just decides like pour rain, so I went from like eighty degrees to like sixty degrees. I was soaking wet, so I have no idea what happened to my head. But that was Monday, so on Tuesday I was feeling a lot better. And Tuesday I realized that there's impact wrestling. And Impact Wrestling is actually pretty good wrestling for what they're trying to do. Sweet, 19 minutes left. Yep, I just want to see because I'm uploading videos to YouTube. I'm doing stuff. Even though I don't get paid for it. Well, that's, that's called a hobby at least. The first match Impact Wrestling comes on is Marafuji versus Josh Alexander. Um, I do have to say that Impact personnel are so happy to be on Access TV every time they mentioned it. And they had an amazing new intro. They actually sunk money into their production of their TV show by having, again, not a long one, but it kind of shows the major players, the major stars to music. It's really cool. A minute or two? So it's not like five minutes of intro. You're not, you're not, you're not like, oh man. When's this going to start, really? I could go make pizza now. I can, I can do do stuff. I could have like three beers. Oh, no, it's on now. Okay, good. It's like, oh, yeah, it's time for Impact Wrestling. It's here. I got my comfy chair, beverage over there, have some food. Oh, we go to wrestling. That's awesome. Whole new intro is amazing. That was uh, so the first match was Marafuji versus Josh Alexander from the North. Fast striking by Marafuji. Whoa! Someone learned something in their sojourn to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Alex, Josh Alexander is the more traditional wrestler. Again, he wears the wrestling headgear. Traditional mat wrestler, 
really good. Again, I love the fact that they do have different styles. Uh, this match just seems to be really short for some reason. Uh, Marafuji was very... It was, it was weird because they trade finishes at the end. And this is becoming something in Impact where it's becoming very indie-ish in the fact that finishers don't finish people. I mean, like there was some pitting of heavy chops. That was really good. Um, again, actually, I think it was a lot better than that. I think because Alexander really slowed things down a lot to his style, though. I would do better than that. Uh, eventually, Marafuji hit slice bread number two, which is a finisher. It just seemed longer than ten minutes. I don't know if that's good or I don't know if that's bad now. You know what? I'll, I'll give the benefit of the doubt. Because it's the opening match. Josh Alexander is not necessarily a singles competitor. Whereas Marafuji is. Josh Alexander is more used to the tag team situations. You know what? Even Marafuji won. This is a good cheeseburger of a match. And then we had OVE. OVE got to the arena. They got kicked out. OVE is so good. Uh, the Rascals were in the treehouse. They they were in the treehouse and talking to Falaba. And Falaba is just like, Bah. Bah. Mm, bah. 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 They're like, We know how to fix this. Puffs of smoke come out. Yeah. That's what they were on. And then all of a sudden, Fall Ball's like, you know, like the Bard said, I let my friend down and the same way that Hamlet lowered his guard. And I'm like, whoa. And the rascals are like, whoa. Because remember, the rascals started off by like talking about like once his mother. And Bob, of course, entered. Boz, follow Boz, good. That was fun. Then there was a weird six woman tag match. And this did not go the way I thought it was going to go. It was Taya, Kier Hogan, and Mad Madison Rain. Kier Hogan, man. Otto oh, is so tushy. <laughs> Do people still use the word tushy? I like that word, Tushy. Especially with Kara Hogan's Tushy. Uh, they take on, well, get back to the point here. They take on Rosemary. Alexander and Alex, Yeah, Alexander and Nicole. And Jordan and Grace. When I saw Alexander and Nicole, I'm like, oh, I know who's eating the pin. But no, it didn't happen that way. Uh, Rosemary, she hit an exploder suplex on Madison Rain. Ty got in a little bit. Uh, Kira Hogan just this, just oh, tushy, so amazing. Uh, the Kira had a nasty botch too. Like she tried to top rope her crown and she like fell on her shoulder. I don't know how that feels like because she didn't. She did not fall here. She fell. Here, so her head went. No, sorry, the head went this way. The shoulder went that way, and that's not the way the body works, folks. I did that once as a as a amateur wrestler. It sucks. I dislocated. Which one? Yeah, this is yeah. That's when I dislocated this one the second time. In fact, I wonder if you guys can hear it. This will be pretty freaky. In fact, every so often, I know I can hear it popping it out every so often. I know I screwed that shoulder up for good. This one I've only dislocated once. That's still pretty good. Oh, and uh, to let everyone know, if you did somehow get in touch with me, I'm going to save... I'm going to give my list. <laughs> I like I like upsetting the Techno Blue Ranger. I'm going to put your name on blue paper. And I'm going to use blue ink too. Because he only sees in shades of blue. So so we'll see how much we'll see how much he likes me tomorrow. Because he'll probably watch 
the um, crown jewel. I'll, I'll be at work. But uh, with this match, Garrett blocks that shoulder. She's like, I'm done. Like I'm tagging on. I'm rolling to the outside. She was in pain. That was a pain you cannot fake. And the reason why how you cannot fake it is because she was not screaming. She was trying to hold it in. Trust me, I've done that too. When you ever you try to be macho, you're like, <laughs> yeah, she was doing that. That's when you know it really hurts. Because if she's there, ah, ah, my shoulder, my shoulder, my shoulder. Yeah, that's 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 wrestling. That's wrestling acting. When you're like. Ah, yeah, that's when you really screwed something up. Uh, then uh, Jordan hit the Jordan bomb. Oh, Jordan Grace is hot, too. Juicy. Ty is married, so I can't say anything about her. I think Madison Reigns and Josh? I think. Josh Gordon? And I have no idea who Alexei Nicole is. So. And Kira Hogan. She just has a tushy. Um, it was it was a weird match. Um, Jordan Grace won by a roll up cradle. I don't know. It was it was weird. It was kind of botchy. Kira Hogan took herself out. Madison Ray looked like she had no clue what was going on. Ty was like, huh? Uh, Rosemary was there. Rosemary's getting up there in years. It was good for me. But not so much for her wrestling career. Because she's not wearing those cute right up my butt pants. Because she has a little booty on her too. So uh, Rosemary, Alexa Nicole, and Jordan Grace won. Meh. It was a ham sandwich. And the Desi Hit Squad come out. They take on Willie Mack and Rich Swan. This is terrible because the Desi Hit Squad's only one of like a few real tag teams that Impact has. AEW has all the tag teams. AEW specialty is tag team wrestling. Impact specialty is kind of extreme matches and women's matches. WWE is like men's every. They're they're good at everything. They're they're the jack of all trades, master of none. Impact's becoming really good at women's wrestling though, and intergender wrestling, and the main event scene's are really good too. Probably the main main event scene for AEW, Impact, and WWE. They're all on par with each other. Then WWE's mid cards probably better than the other mid carders. Uh, Impact's women's divisions probably the best, followed by WWE and then AEW. AEW's tag team divisions off the charts, and then probably WWE and then Impact. And NXT is kind of that weird middle ground because again, the best of NXT is really good. After the best of NXT, though, there's such a precipitous decline. Um, but with this match, it was Desi Hit Squad versus Willie Mack and Rich Swan. Uh, Desi Hit Squad, I mean, they try to get the early events. They're smart. Uh, even in the, and Don Callis is actually really good. He's like, yeah, everyone knows kind of how they pose and stuff nowadays. So, so they have that planned out. Smart wrestling. Uh, eventually, Swan and Mack, they, they, they clean the house after they figure out what happened to him. Desi Hit Squad, I mean, they're, they're, they do the classic heel tag team double teams whenever they can. That's what I like about them. Uh, Willie Mack does get the hot tag. That's all on the stunner by the Desi Escobar. Oh, that was a thing of beauty. Uh, this was, again, another really fun match, though. Again, even Willie Mack and Rich Swan do some amazing tag team work. This was a good cheeseburger match. I have to start taking names down. So you'll get your shout-out probably tomorrow. 
And it was Tra I'm probably getting this wrong somewhere. So these are shout outs. Again, if you and if you interact with me on the Discord over at Sumina or send me a comment or give me a like or a comment or heart. On Facebook as a friend of verse, you can actually get a free shout out. Eventually, for some people, I'm gonna have to put them into the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. They're that good, or they're that they do that that often. I have to make them a character. In my wrestling league. The seer, I think it was a tra oh tra la la too. Well, that's what it says. Tra la la too. Uh, we had a moose promo, which is kind of a funny golf thing. Uh, Ken Shamrock was in the ring. I don't know. He almost sounded like he was going to quit. Until Joey Ryan shows up. Joey Ryan, the, the, the man of strong style. Uh, so it's going to be Joey Ryan's pick. Versus Ken Shamrock's ankle lock. That just seems so funny. Ken Shamrock seems so like, what the hell am I doing? Who the hell are you? Then the next match was Ace Austin versus Eddie Edwards in a street fight match. Um, Ace Austin comes in normally. Eddie Edwards brings out two garbage cans. And one of them was full of garbage. So it looks like he actually found a real garbage can. Because normally wrestling garbage cans are full of like kendo sticks. Thumbtacks. Staple guns. Chairs, keyboards, cheese graters, and cooking sheets. This garbage can had like a, a big cheeseburger, fries, and a soda in it. So it looked like a real garbage can. Um, then, oh, there were unprotected headshots with the garbage can. ECW, ECW, ECW style. Without like forks. And underage wrestlers. Um, Ace Austin, again, Keith Taylor. He's like, I'm not going to give you people what you want. And he does a cool old magic trick with a stick. That's pretty cool. We know Scum eventually come in. They jump Eddie Edwards. He takes Cameron pretty quickly. Then there was, and I, the announcer said, and I think Discord said, they never saw this spot before. Ace Austin went off the rope. So, so if Ace Austin here, whoop, off rope. Eddie Edwards here. As Ace Austin goes to dive to spear Eddie Edwards with holding garbage can. The garbage can, he held the garbage can. Ace Austin jumped into the garbage can. And then Eddie Edwards slammed on the ground. I mean, that was amazing, though. And they used the garbage can lids. But I'll tell you what, Ace jumped into that garbage can. I never saw that one before. That was just pretty cool, though. Um, they have some big tables up there in Canada, too. They have, like, super tables. But, yeah, then, uh, well, well, with Ace Austin in the garbage can, then you just, and Eddie Edwards threw the garbage can down, hit the garbage can with a chair, which is kind of classic. I, I think the most that does is it actually just rings your bell a lot. Because zing, oh. Because the garbage can, again, takes most of the damage. <laughs> then it was this, the tables. And Ace Austin hit something like a slice bread number two. I forget what he calls it, but it went. But Eddie Edwards went through the table. Eddie Edwards lost. And I figured this was going to be his call spot match because he did win call your spot battle royal. We'll see what happens to the next pay-per-view, I think, in January. For impact, because I'll live stream that. So we'll see what happens there. <laughs> and then we, we, there was a great, so this was an amazing set segment. It was a ghost of, 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 of Sue, Sue Young. So to build up to this, Jessica Havoc hung Sue Young. They went to some Mexican medical facility. Which is the first mistake. And she died on, on the table. Which is weird because her heart was still beating. 
in the ambulance ride, and, and once she got oxygen, she would have been alive still. Huh. That's a pretty bad medical staff they have. But so, so she dies, and all of a sudden, she she loses all 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 of her like undeadness, and she comes back. Hi, I'm Susie, and everyone's like, ah! Even the, the teeners are there catering. They're like, ah, it's the ghost of Sue Young. She's hot, bro. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So I wonder if Susie's gonna be Sue Young. And I wonder how this is going to play. Because they could do a lot with this line. They could, of course, have the um, uh, a Reverend James whatever. Rosemary involved. The, the Reverend. The Sinister Minister involved. Because the Sinister Minister married Melissa and Brian Cage, Melissa could get involved. Oh, wow. There's a whole bunch of stories they could actually do off. Off this ridiculousness because she's hot now, bro. <laughs> and then Johnny Swinger is trying to hit on Alicia Edwards. And they said, Ace Austin came and said, Dude, fuck off. It's like, well, Since I won, will you go out to dinner with me? Alicia Edwards was like, Well, I don't know. Eddie Edwards, Eddie and I are so complex. Yes. Uh, at least Ace Austin isn't a sex addict like Rusev. Nice swing it could be, though. <laughs> That's a great tag team combo. Joey Ryan and Johnny Swinger. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible if I do that. That'd be so funny. <laughs> Intergender wrestling. <laughs> Johnny Swinger and Joey Ryan. Oh, wow. So bad. Bad thought I had in my head. Uh, then we had Brian Cage versus Sammy Callahan in the steel cage. This was amazing. It was a hot start. Um, Sammy Callahan's already in the structure. Brian Cage comes out. Brian Cage is right by the door. Sammy Callahan drops, drop kicks the cage door into Brian Cage. Amazing. Um... Then that just like seems to like annoy Brian Cage. Though Sammy gets tossed all over the place, it's tossed into the cage from the outside. So awesome! I mean, the cage just being the best. Uh, eventually, uh, Sammy Callan th does get the equalizer out. He gets a baseball. He finds a baseball bat, throws it in the ring, climbs in the ring, locks himself in the ring. He's like, "Yes, I won." Brian Cage like parkours over it. Obviously, something he learned in Lucha Underground under the tutelage of one Johnny Mundo. Jump the cage. Uh, eventually, someone they got a chair in the cage too. I forget when that happened. I just remember seeing it, and there's no saying chair in cage. Uh, cage gets busted open though, and on Sammy Callahan's vest it has Melissa. I forget if it was at the back or the front though. Again, OVE is so good though. And it was a pile driver one count kick out, kind of back to back finishers. Then there was a top row pile driver, which actually finished off Brian Cage. Brian Cage lost his belt on Access TV to Sammy Callahan in a steel cage. Oh, wait a second. I forgot a whole bunch of stuff. Well, this match. Yeah, this is this was amazing. This was a surf and turf match. I'll censor that little cheeseburger after the Ace Austin one. So that's okay. So with this match, this was a surf and turf match. Overall, I mean, Impact was a really good cheeseburger of a show. And you know what time it is? It's time to take another break. So I can come back and talk about AEW. Again, the third of the triple feature. Bye. Welcome back again. Now it's time to talk about AEW. Who do I have to thank here? 
Um. Oh, yes. Sunny. Oh, Kaiju fan. He responded to me. He's funny. I forget what I said. Oh, yeah, it was Bath of Water. <laughs> Joey Novak. And Sonny Bimbo. I guess that's how you say it. That's what I wrote, so therefore that's what it's going in as. Bimbo. There you go. Let's talk about some AEW now. And close that out, because that's still processing. Your video was uploaded. That's always good to see. This video is going to take a while to process, too. So AEW starts off. Um, Sammy Guevara versus Hangman Adam Page. Yeah, they just kind of go right to the wrestling, which is pretty good. Um, okay, that's the Panda Bear thing. So that was pretty. I don't know. Sammy's his own thing now. He's saying Sammy's Sammy Guevara is like taking a cell, like like Facebooking or, or live streaming himself in the ring going against Adam Hangman Page. That was kind of funny. Uh, a very traditional mat wrestling for a long time. Very deliberate pace by Ad Adam Hangman Page. I'm starting to think that AEW is trying to become the American version of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Because with the exception of a couple spots by Sammy Guevara, uh, it's very New Japan strike heavy. It's good. Not my personal thing. I like the Lucha stuff they, that they incorporate. And they incorporate a whole bunch of it, too. But this was a weird show. This whole sh AEW show is a weird show. Um, again, a bunch of lazy covers by both wrestlers. Uh, the top, uh, Sammy Guevara at one time went up to the top rope just to slap Hangman Page in the face. Hangman Page again because he just slapped him in the face. Uh, there was a chant of Sammy sucks. That was kind of funny. Again, pretty standard wrestling stuff. Really good. The Buckshot Lariat. So, Hangman Page, again, one with his signature, the Buckshot Lariat, instead of the Dead Eye, which I, which that would be good if he saves it for, for big things. Again, if you're going to save this like amazing move, you do want to save it for big shows. So, it was, it was pretty good. This was actually a quick match for AEW. This was a quick match by AEW standards, but they didn't go like the whole 15, 20 minutes. It's like, oh, this match is going for a half an hour. It's going to go. That means it goes twenty minutes. So if it goes fifteen minutes, you know it goes like thirteen minutes. But this was a good match. This was a solid eh, cheeseburger match. And then Paige cuts a really quick promo. So yeah, there's some dissension. I just want Pac. I think they're getting ready for full gear. Which is, oh, is that this weekend or next weekend? I think it's November 9th. Yeah, because the second I go to a party, yeah, so it makes sense to be the 9th because that's Saturday. But yeah, so in two weeks. And then I will show everyone how to make your own crunch wraps. Because that's what I'm going to have for dinner that day, probably. So I can have, yeah, cause, or worse comes to worse. I just go some, do that too. That makes sense. I'll, I'll figure something out. Um, then we have the Rock and Roll Express. Bobby Eaton and, oh, I forget the other guy's name now. Stan Lane. I, forget, I just know them as Rock and Roll Express. It's been a while. Uh, they meet the private party, so that's pretty cool. Uh, then it was Shauna taking on Hikaru Shida. <laughs> this was an okay woman's match. Um, Shauna had a good start. She's like the Portuguese best kept secret coming out of France. Or something. I don't know. It's weird. The Kairushita comes out. Kind of standard promo. Standard entrance. I'll tell you what. The funny thing about, about, about these two women. 
And this tells you probably what little AEW thinks about putting together their women who aren't in title scenes. For Shauna, she was wearing a leopard skin sports bra. Only because you could see the back of it. And it was like a racer back. And she just had like her top was like a tie on. So she didn't bother to try to hide her obviously non coordinated sports bra. Minor thing. I enjoyed them. Like, she's French. She has boobies. I can see her bra. And however, we got Rashida. Whoa! That was a pretty interesting cut on those pants of hers. There were some sky blue panties there, folks. That's pretty good. Not so much seeing the brown sheer panties of Tessa, of one Tessa Blanchard as she got suplexed by Man Man Fulton. But still, that's a little something. Uh, Shana had a good start then. Eventually they got to the outside. Uh, Hikaru pulled out a chair, and everyone was like, she can't use a chair. No, she set the chair up. She launched herself from said chair into Shana. That was pretty cool. Um, again, chair looking kind of excited a little bit. Uh, then they said it was a generous 10 count. Poor JR. He's, he's so old old man wrestling guy. It's kind of funny. Uh, she does, again, strong style. Not really a smooth match, because there were a couple times but Shauna and she just seemed a little botchy. Uh, Shauna also stole that finisher from someone. I want to say she stole it, I think, from Mandy Rose. She had the first time rolled out. Uh, Shida. And then it, it was so obvious. Um, Shauna did something from the top rope, landed on Shida. And, and Shida just literally like, rolled right into like, like. Shauna was here standing up. Sheeta was here, like on her belly, and, and then she just like literally like rolled over, like oh, I just have to fall on you to pin you. So, I mean, everyone kicks out of the Falcon's arrow. Excalibur, you should know that you're the guy that knows the wrestling moves, the suicide, Topacito, Atomico sent on us. I don't know, but everyone kicks out of the Falcon's arrow. Uh, eventually, Hikaru Shida did hit that hit, did hit Mandy Rose's finisher again. It was okay. She went over. That's a ham sandwich of a match. Then there was a weird Brandy promo. I don't know if it was a possessed Brandy or Lucha Underground Brandy. I don't know. It's just weird. Then the Rock and Roll Express got jumped by LAX, which was awesome. Uh, then there was Cody Rhodes and Tony in, in a limo, and he was talking about, uh, Tony was telling a story about Dusty. Well, well, Willie Nelson wanted to go meet Dusty Rhodes. And what happened at the hotel? Willie Nelson showed up. So Tony, my man Tony Savani, came back to get me. And what happened was I was naked. I was buck naked like the dad was born. And, and Tony said, staring at all my glory. Willie Nelson's here to meet you. Willie Nelson's here to meet you. Well, you know what? People wait for the stars, baby. So, stars always make you wait. That was funny. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll tell you what. I, don't... <sighs> I wonder who would have Better wrestling stories. After I heard that one, would it be Tony Schiavone? I still think Ric Flair wins with wrestling stories. Dude, you give you give Ric Flair a couple a couple beers and just say, "Well, what was the wildest thing?" <gasps> Ooh! And I just, I would be so tickled to hear that. Hulk Hogan stories are probably bland and boring. And they're probably all the same theme. Oh. You go out with Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard's actually seeing Dago, though. That won't be able to happen. 
Who's the other one? No, Blanchard was on. Um, oh, Ellering's daughter. Just to hear some Paul Ellering stories about wrestling in the 80s. There was so much coke. Even Melissa couldn't do all that coke. Because I had the algorithm. Oh, wow. Whose, story would be, whose stories would be better? Blanchard's. I'll tell you what, Arn and Ole Anderson have to have some good stories, too. Oh, wow, but how many of those would involve Ric Flair? Or would Tony Schiavone be pretty good? Tony Schiavone might be up there, I think. I don't know. We'll see. But then it was a six-man tag match getting on, getting on to the action. It was a QT Marshall, Alex Silver, and Alex Reynolds. Alex Silver and Alex Reynolds seemed like they were actually a tag team. They got the best friends and Orange Cassidy. Um, they came out as Rick and Morty because it's Halloween, and Rick and Morty's going to feature AEW November 10th. I'll give AEW this much credit. They're trying to get into the mainstream, though. Uh, it was a pretty standard match. Again, the triple team tag teams. Uh, the best friends hit Soul Food, which is pretty good. QT Marshall. He stopped him from hugging out. No one's going to hug it out. Eventually, there's a three times suck because Arn Caster Jesus stands there with his hand in his pockets. On one side, um, Trent, the other is, is, is a Chuck. And they, of course, hug with, with making a Orange Cassidy sandwich, which does not sound good. Um, and so that was pretty cool. They hit, hit the strong zero. Orange Cassidy did kind of just like, he tried to do his kicks. <laughs> I think it was Alex Silver was like, this is garbage. Just kicked him right in the face. Um, it made me laugh, though, I'll tell you that much. So, this was a semi squash match. The, other, the, the three guys got, got some of their stuff in. It made it a little bit more interesting than a normal squash match. This was a ham sandwich. Then it's contract signing time. Yeah, no one wants to see contract sign. You all know what happens. There's a fight in suits or in this, this in this instance, Jack Hagar is in the back beating up Dustin Reynolds because Cody or or yeah, yeah, Dustin Ro Dustin Rhodes. Oops. K Fabe slow. Because Dustin Rhodes got beat up because Cody Rhodes was distracted by the contract signing. Hagar and Sammy, Sammy Guevara is like videotaping everything. I love the fact that, that Sammy Guevara is just like videotaping or, or live streaming assault, which is a crime. There's some stupid YouTube video where they actually showed, uh, I think it was a court case where they actually went to YouTube saying, isn't this you live streaming your crime? And they're like, yeah, that is us. Hey, I look good. <laughs> Not something you really want to admit to. Every so often, some criminals are really stupid. Stupid. Stupid idiot. But uh, the next match was Kip Saban, and Helico and Jack Evans. Um, TH2, which is actually sounds pretty cool. It's almost like THQ, but it's better sounding. Takes on Kenny Omega, who comes out as like video game character, and the Young Bucks don their Ken and Rio uniforms. Again, it's a semi-Halloween theme with all the pumpkins and silliness. Uh, Kenny and the Young Bucks, they get jumped from behind because they start to pose too much. Um, there, was, there was some amazing springboard exposed double stomp that the, that the Young Bucks did on, I think, Kip Saban or maybe even Jack Evans. Oh, that was awesome looking. Evans can just fly them. Um, again, the double team by Evans and Helico by, by TH2. They're, oh, they, they fly. They don't jump. Pentagon Jr. jumps. And Helico flies. Even sets Omega up. Uh, and Helico get, get, gets both Matt Jackson and, and Kenny Omega 
uh, Kip Saban like, got booted as he was trying to do a spear, which is great. Again, Evans Moonsault. Off of Matt Jackson, onto Nick Jackson. I'll tell you what, Jack Evans might have one of the he, he's, he's the one that knocked Charlotte off of the top moonsault list. Because his goes flying, especially when he wears that neon green. Then again, there's always a super kick party. Uh, Evans eventually eats the pin. It was a, I'll tell you what, it was a fun, fast paced match. Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks win. This was a surf and turf match. Then LAX come out and beat up the Young Bucks. That's always good to see because they have a match again at full gear. Two. I got that. Um, it was Peter Avalon in the ring. He was telling people, Shh, they 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 have to they they have to do away with this librarian gimmick. It sucks. And Lisa Bates looks like she's aged twenty years. Uh, Moxley eventually shuts them up, which which made the gives them the um, Death Rider paradigm shift, whatever he calls it now, like like the uh, the uh, super dirty beat CDT, and that kind of rises out of the crowd. Moxley's like, okay, they're gonna have an unsanctioned match. I'm down for it. You're gonna see blood. It's gonna be a mess. It's like, yes, John Moxley's gonna do what John Moxley does best. Bring back CZW. No, no, no. No, 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 CZW. I think the only thing I remember from the CZW that was probably the worst was when someone got their back weed whacked in like a death. Not light tubes. Light tubes sound horrific, but not that bad. Well, besides all the poison stuff that, besides all the, I think, argon. And something else like that makes them glow. And I should really know this. I know it's argon and it makes you like loopy if you breathe it in. It's not something you want to breathe in. The glass, yeah, it's glass. It's not really that thick though. But it was then the reciprocating saw. Oh yeah, some guy took a, like a reciprocating saw like right to the forehead. That can end pretty badly. Yeah, taking power saws to people's heads is what really turns me off. That and just like taking a knife and like carving your initials in someone's head. New Jack. It's New Jack. Whatever New Jack did after he left ECW is just no. Light tubes I'm okay with. Thumb tacks I'm okay with. Staple guns, because you can fake that easily. And if you staple them in the hand, it's not that bad. I mean, people voluntarily like puncture their nose and ears, so it's not that. <laughs> staple a gun to the vagina. To the baby maker has to. Oh, that was so funny. Then to the boobies. Ouch. Uh, so, the, so they could get creative. Again, as long as Moxie doesn't bring in weed whackers or reciprocating saws, I'm good with it. Then we have the main event of the evening, which is the tag team. The tag team championship. And the weird thing is, it, this was a weird match. There was about 15 minutes left, maybe 16 or 17. And it's like, oh no. Be only because Excalibur mentioned it that if they can't get this match in, it'll be on social media. I don't want to see social media. I want to see it on TV. So SCU starts and Lucha Brothers, they just start by a brawl. Then there was Lucha Action Galore! Again, the double teams by both, by both teams just abound all over the place. There's action in the ring. Excalibur, he, he did a tease of, of social media, and, and when I heard that, I'm like, oh, wait. 
They might do that. It's terrible. Um, uh, Pentagon hit a Canadian destroyer. That was great. It was a double cross body, a table spot. I'll tell you what. Kazarian looked like he almost killed himself, though. He tried to do a Huracurana from the apron to the floor on, I think, Ray Phoenix. He landed on that shoulder again, Kira Hogan esque. His head went this this direction. His shoulder went that direction. Not good. Then it looks like he really like when his head was there, it looks like he fell like literally so your shoulder's out here. This goes down. Only because he looked like he hit himself. He landed right here on his head. And he just he just looked out of it for the rest of the match. He's like, yeah. Kansas. Topeka hash brown. Because he was out for a while. Uh, Scorpius guy then, then gets back inside. And... There was a tease of the double stomp package pile driver, but Scorpio Sky won by an inside cradle. Yeah, Lucia Brothers don't lose by inside cradles. They lose because someone hits some amazing Lucha move on them, or some like devastating like double team neck breaking finisher. Not by an inside cradle. SCU won. I understand them winning. I don't like the way they won. They won anyway, though. It's a cheeseburger of a match. And wow, that was a somewhat underwhelming AEW. Is AEW pulling... WWE stunts? They don't want to pull WWE stunts. Not having those weird finishers. Um, so, AEW... Hmm, was a cheeseburger of a show. And that was AEW, folks. And that ends my triple feature! Um... We'll probably have a double feature because I know next week I have to work Monday night again. Although we'll see because I don't have to work Tuesday. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. A little bit. Kind of depends on how I'm feeling. I know if I'm over a cold, it's like I'll stay up forever. Especially if I don't have to show up to work early. But all these people, you're getting your shout outs tomorrow by the Techno Blue Ranger. Maybe because I don't feel like watching Crown Jewel and you will. <coughs> uh, so thank you again everyone for watching I do apologize from this triple feature show okay, how everyone and oh enjoy the Havoc of Halloween special which features all your favorites from the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling that should be up let's see here is it going to be up soon oh it's up already oh yes oh evil Tom <laughs> evil Tom's there corporate Tom's there Kane is there as well. I have to send this to a friend too. Cool. And like to thank everyone for watching, and have a good night, folks. Bye.